Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I, Khyati Naravne, take this opportunity to welcome you all to today's webinar on Chat GPT and beyond, powered by artificial intelligence. We acknowledge the valued presence of our chief guest, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan, Principal Secretary, ITENC and Department of Industries and Commerce, Government of Telangana. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and speaking to our members today. We also acknowledge the presence of Mr. Bala Prasad, CIO and Global Head Technology Advisory Services at TCS, who's going to uh, take the session. And uh, we acknowledge the presence of the chair, Mr. K. Mohan Raidu, uh, the co-chair, Mr. Pankaj Devan, would be joining soon. And of course, our president, Mr. Ranil Agarwal. So welcome to each one of you. Uh, for the information of our members, as you all may be aware, Chat GPT is a chat box launched by OpenAI, which is engrossing topic all around. And we've been reading a lot of articles and trying to evaluate it with regard to, I think, the opportunities, the danger, or, you know, there's a lot of things that we've been reading in news on this. So I think uh, this is a very timely event. And since, you know, the IT committee has come forward uh, and uh, thought of taking this initiative. Uh, we also uh, invite the members that to post their questions uh, during the session in the chat box. And I think after the session, we will be able to take each one of them. And in case we are unable to, you can always write back to us on info at ftcci.in or vishal uh, at uh, ftcci.in and we will ensure that we respond to you. And before uh, I invite President to welcome, we would like to show a short film of FTCCI since we have a lot of non-members who have joined us today. Encourage trade and nineteen seventeen, the year when a dedicated organization, the Deccan Chamber of Commerce, was formed to encourage trade and commerce activities. The historical journey of the organization has witnessed great transformation as per the changing needs of the industry and businesses. Federation of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FTCCI, a legacy of excellence, voice of the industry, representing interests of over 25,000 businesses of all sizes, sectors and regions, is empowering industry and trade of Telangana State. A world leader in pharma, a global hub for vaccine, home to all major MNCs, leader in IT exports, and emerging first stop of India. FTCCI advocates a pro-business environment, caters to the needs of MSMEs, budding entrepreneurs, and traders through its advisory services in taxation, market information, industry-related issues, B2B Connection The Chamber has its nominees in the state level advisory committees to help drive business productivity. FTCCI aids in providing certificate of origin for exporters, issues visa recommendation for business travels. The Federation imparts job skills through its dedicated skill center. It has adopted 14 government ITIs to improve the employability of students. With a uniquely global perspective, the FTCCI events reach a highly engaged audience, policymakers, and stakeholders aiming towards Atmanirbhar Bharat. FTCCI to work with government, tell us and guide us that we to remain competitive, to remain better than our competition. FTCCI for joining us and I thank the office bearers of FTCCI for inviting me. Jai Telangana, Jai Hind. Come and be a part of this dynamic and proactive organization. Together, let's realize the vision 
for a progressive future. Thank you so much. Uh, I now invite uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, President of FTCCI, to deliver the welcome address. Shri Jayesh Ranjanji, Principal Secretary, Department of Industries and Information Technology. Shri Mohan Raidu, Chair of ICT Committee. Shri Bala Prasad Pitigari, Chief Innovation Officer and Global Head, Technology Advisory Services, CMT Unit at TCS, and Co Chair of ICT Committee. Shri Pankaj Divan, Co Chair of ICT Committee. Khyati Naramne, our CEO, MC members and past presidents, members of FTCCI. participants ladies and gentlemen good evening to all of you i welcome you all to this interesting and important program on webinar on chat gpt and beyond powered by artificial intelligence every new technology has brought about a transformational change when google was launched in 1998 it was one of the search engine available on web which uses complex algorithm to crawl the web and index pages which it then ranks according to relevance and popularity google and chat gpt uses different underlying technology google's search algorithm is based on complex mathematical calculations while chat gpt is based on a neural network that has been trained on a large corpus of text chat gpt it is chat generative pre trained transformer is a chat bot it is a large language model developed and launched as a prototype by open artificial intelligence on november 30 2022 it was created using a vast amount of data and advanced machine learning algorithms its purpose is to assist users in generating human like responses to their questions and statements it gives a detailed responses and articulate responses across many domains of knowledge it is capable of processing and understanding natural language input from users it can give answers on wide range of questions from basic factual inquiries to more complex ones that requires nuanced and contextual answers chat gpt is versatile and gives responses on diverse range of topics including science technology history current events and more and it gives more accurate and helpful responses possible i remember when i was in college the fax machine was has come and and we used to wonder how the paper that is the print on one paper will come on the fax machine on the other paper but it has evolved technology has evolved over the years and now we have emails we have now more technology is developing so i hope this webinar helps you in understanding what is chat gpt and how it is helpful and our learned speaker will clear all your doubts thank you over to you khyati yeah thank you thank you so much mr agarwal and uh, now i invite the chair of the ict committee mr k mohan raidu to uh, give the theme address thank you kathy shri uh, jayesh ranjan uh, is and the principal secretary itnc uh, mr anil agarwal president of pcci uh, uh, kathy ceo of pcci bala pedigari our co chair and the uh, today's speaker uh, vishal director of pcci and all the ladies and gentlemen in the audience very good afternoon to all of you i welcome you to this webinar on chat gpt uh, <clears throat> i will give a small glimpse of what is happening at ict committee at uh, fcci i will take a, a few minutes over the a few years you know we have uh, been doing programs on digital transformation social media marketing ai iot blockchain and 5g etc this year we have a vibrant ict committee with two advisors and three co-chairs advisors are mr professor uday desai from iit hyderabad and mr rajana from tcs co our co-chairs are bala pedigari mr pankaj divan from idea labs and mr bs rao 
from Adani group. Committee members are from TCS. Uh, we have the committee members from TCS, GMR, Adani group, Oracle, T-Hub, and many IT companies. We have drawn a calendar of programs this year, which include Deep Tech, uh, Deep Tech Roundtable, Startup Corporate Connect, Mega Event on Blockchain and 5G, Domain Hubs at Educational Institutions, Skill Development Programs in Blockchain, Cloud and AI, and, uh, and also uh, an MSME health card system with, on which we are working. A few of the 10 programs that we have done this year are webinar on building trust in cross-border data flows in collaboration with the International Chamber of Commerce France and the application modernization powered by 5G and Edge uh, by experts from RCI, Wipro and OpenText. Then we have also done a deep tech roundtable at T-Hub on 9th of uh, Jan. Then coming to the, today's topic, uh, generative AI refers to a class of artificial intelligence algorithms creating new content that resembles human created content. Generative AI models are typically trained on large data sets of examples and uh, use that data to generate new content. Chart GPT, which stands for the chart generative pre-trained transformer, is a specific type of generative AI model that is focused on generating natural language text in the form of conversations. It was trained on a massive data set of text and can be used to generate human-like responses to natural language inputs. The future of chart GPT is likely to involve continued improvements that will allow it to generate even more re realistic and natural language responses. I uh, invite uh, uh, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan. He is the Principal Secretary for Information Technology, Electronics and Communications and Industries and Commerce Department of uh, Departments of Government of Telangana. He is the beloved friend of FTCCI, has a great passion for technologies. His eloquent talks on technologies, use cases and opportunities mesmerize even the industry leaders. He is the visionary for the growth of IT in Telangana. I invite uh, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan. Uh, before I ask him to uh, take over, I also invite Mr. Uh, Padma, Padma Sri, Dr. Tripuraneni Hanuman, Hanuman Chaudhary, the first and founding chairman of uh, uh, and managing director of Videsh Sanchar Nigam, uh, India's first international telecommunication corporation. He has uh, shown a keen interest to you know participate in this uh, uh, webinar. He must be uh, he must be watching. Thank you. I now request Mr. Jay Sanjan to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, all the <clears throat> senior FTCCI leadership, all the participants. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, FTCCI for organizing this webinar. This is the newest kind of a technology. And uh, <clears throat> to ensure that more and more people understand what this technology is, what can it do? How can it help us? But at the same time, is there some flip side to this technology? And how do you take correct precautions about it? Having a webinar of this kind with uh, hundreds of participants is indeed a very appreciable initiative. So first of all, my congratulations for uh, taking this uh, wonderful uh, <clears throat> initiative. I would uh, mention to everyone that we have seen, particularly in the last decade or so, advancements in uh, technology like ever before. In fact, the pace at which technology is advancing, new knowledge is coming up, particularly in the last 10 years. This has never been seen in any of the preceding decades. So many transformative work has happened throughout the world, but in one period of 10 years, to see so many new things come up, 
is really mind boggling and uh, chat gpt is in the is the latest in that series of uh, advancement of knowledge particularly in the area of artificial intelligence so as uh, kyati and mohan rai dugaru and others mentioned see this this bunch of this branch of uh, knowledge advancement in ai this is all related to the foundation of natural language processing see for example when i speak of course as a child i have been taught the basics of english grammar the vocabulary the alphabets but over a period of time i don't have to think too much i mean the mind is automatically processing what sentence will follow this what will be the next sentence so it this kind of a pro- processing is happening very very normally and similarly as a listener you just need to hear the first part of the word that i'm going to say and it will immediately register to you the meaning will become very clear unless the vocabulary has something which is completely unfamiliar you will be able to pick my speech very very easily you don't have to think twice or keep a dictionary open to continuously check etc so the brain is uh, is kind of wired in a way in in that format so natural la- language processing is a branch of uh, ai in which uh, computers are given the ability or they are trained to develop that ability to understand the spoken word or to even understand text in the same way as human beings can do and we have seen particularly lots of transformative work has happened in uh, if you premier institutions in the us in uh, mit in stanford and rel- elsewhere also in fact we don't know much of what is happening in china in chinese uh, science academies etc but they have also done some remarkable discoveries and of course in our country also lots of work has happened in uh, nlp i'm very happy to share with you that our own triple it triple it hyderabad is involved in a project of course the project has been commissioned by government of india and i'll speak a little bit more about it also the project is called uh, bhashini so as you know india is one of the very few countries in the world where multiple languages are spoken while english is some kind of a link language but there are hundreds of people millions of people who don't follow english they speak their own language and how do you connect let us say a telugu speaker to a marathi speaker or to a bengali speaker so that kind of work is happening through throughout the country using uh, the project is called bhashini and triple it of hyderabad is one of the constituents one of the participants one of the knowledge crea- creators rather for that project there's a national level uh, project monitoring group and they have invited a few state secretaries also to be a part of that i am one of them so uh, i i can tell you with my own knowledge and experience that our country is uh, not far behind when it comes to nlp applications etc but as i said the biggest news making uh, application is the chat gpt which as everyone else has pointed out has been originated in a company which has now been uh, taken over by microsoft called uh, open ai and uh, lots of us are using chat gpt just for fun purpose in in fact i also have an account and uh, i ask all kinds of fun question in fact uh, i just noticed on social media very interesting usage someone known to me posed a question to chat gpt of of uh, the question posed was tell five most common proverbs in telugu and immediately within uh, seconds five proverbs in telugu came they were written in telugu they were written in english their meaning was given in english and it was all very very amazing that uh, chat gpt's uh, ability to crawl through what could be some hundreds of telugu textbooks or uh, written kind of uh, documents and then pull out the five most popular proverbs etc of course chat gpt is not 100% accurate many of us know about it for example uh, once i asked about myself that who is jayesh ranjan so of course the answer was reasonably accurate but it also mentioned that i have worked as health secretary in the government i have never been the health secretary so it's roughly correct but it is not uh, 100% accurate but i mean apart from the fun part of just as a past time you pose all kind of questions you see what kind of answers come there is lots of uh, opportunity also 
like any other technology this technology can automate lots of things for which we spend hours and hours and again due to spending manual hours there is a scope of error so i can give you an example uh, let us look at lawyers if a lawyer has to argue a case or if a judge has to deliver judgment he has to go through volumes of back back cases back judgments etc etc and uh, sometimes it may not be possible that you uh, read each and every judgment related to that particular case you may miss out but suppose now that we have chat gpt suppose i tell him suppose there is some case of let us say uh, forgery or whatever and a judgment has to be written and suppose i ask chat gpt to pull out the gist of 10 top 20 most important supreme court cases which are related to forgery and if chat gpt does that imagine the kind of assistance the judicial officer or the judge will have and there are many other applications this is just one idea which i thought but there are hundreds of other potential ways in which uh, manual activities can be automated with much more accuracy of course chat gpt and any other kind of natural language processing software they need to be trained i mean when uh, i mentioned what is nlp and i mentioned that it is the ability for computers to process spoken uh, language or text the same way our human brain does it is not through magic you have to train your software for hours and hours and hours over humongous piece of data so huge volumes of data terabytes of data have to be exposed and then only what is called machine learning machine starts discovering patterns this the essence behind natural language processing is the ability to discover patterns and once the patterns are discovered and there is some consistency in the way patterns are uh, are uh, kind of appearing then the algorithm starts uh, taking over so uh, <clears throat> while i mentioned to you that right now people who are uh, trying chat gpt for fun purpose they also notice lots of inaccuracies etc but i am very sure that and first of all the open ai chat gpt they have been uh, trained only on uh, documents which are valid up to april 2021 so last two years of documents are not shared or not used in the machine learning uh, process and therefore there is always a knowledge gap so to say but at some point in time suppose with more uh, uh, practice more machine learning you develop more and more accuracy the application areas are humongous wherever you have to i i also recall one more case let us say uh, uh, this is something which uh, doctors do suppose i suffer from an ailment let us say uh, let us uh, so I, i have a friend who is one of the leading cancer specialists here and he tells me because we are also close personal friends so we spend uh, informal time also with each other he tells me that typically i mean 90% of the patients who come to him would have already seen at least a dozen doctors by the time they reach him and each doctor has given some diagnosis some prescription some suggestion and he says that a large part of his time is not i won't say wasted but i would say utilized or spent just to read what 12 other doctors before him gave or suggested or advised and many of them advised tests so test reports are there so a large part of his time is just gone through in reading uh, bulky uh, documents and test reports and all that suppose all that gets automated suppose he doesn't have to read anything the machine does it for him so imagine he is a very skilled skilled doctor he is a very skilled surgeon i would say and ideally most of his time should be spent on surgery he should actually be with the patient doing his surgery saving lives but a large part of his time is spent reading papers so suppose that is automated through these kind of uh, artificial in, in ai and ml based technologies how useful will it be so there are lots of good cases and uh, as i said bhashni which is uh, right now a work in progress is a very good example imagine right now people say that uh, in india uh, people are very parochial because it is difficult to understand the other person's language if i am a telugu speaker i would like to remain in and around telangana or andhra pradesh i would not like to go and work in uh, let us say bombay or delhi because i will have some language barrier but suppose there is a solution where in uh, whatever you say is instantly understood instantly relayed and understood to the other person he relays it his answer back to you 
and you understand it in telugu how easy it will it will be for flexible flexibility in migration mobility you can uh, expand your talent pool to bring the best talented people regardless of language barriers and so on and so forth so there are good cases but lots of uh, like any other technology lots of uh, pitfalls or lots of dangers are also getting uh, identified in fact uh, one which is very common commonly very intuitively understood that uh, students will start uh, let us say misusing the chat gpt suppose i am asked to write a assignment for my school or my college Uh, why should i do any kind of research i just open a chat gpt account and mention that this is the topic on which i have to write a thousand word essay in two minutes the essay will be ready so why should i then do any studies etc so this is a pitfall imagine see children go through a schooling process exams are conducted tests are given homework is given assignments are asked to be submitted because you develop the process of critical thinking See, more than you may not become a subject matter expert in that domain you are studying so many things not everything will become your profession at the end of it but the basic purpose of education is to develop a a uh, a skill of critical thinking in you so that later on whatever profession you choose that skill helps you now imagine if uh, every student says that why should i do any kind of original thinking let the machine do it for me i mean that will be disastrous for the civilization it will be disastrous for society in fact when chat gpt came into prominence i remember elon musk had tweeted goodbye to homework but i don't agree with it i will mean, it will be disaster if if no homework is i mean if no one does homework if no one reads anything and uh, the age of a child at a school going age is a very formative age that is the time when you should inculcate the realization that the world is full of knowledge and you should always be knowledge seeker but if everything is uh, getting spoon fed to you that will be disastrous and in fact i just I, i feel very happy about it i just read about it uh, a few days ago i don't recall where i read it but i'll be happy to share the source i learned that a student in uh, princeton in princeton university he has developed a uh, solution it it rivals chat gpt it is called uh, gpt 0 so if as a student i have submitted some assignment to a teacher gpt 0 can check how much of gpt's contribution was there in that assignment whether that uh, assignment is original or whether that uh, that assignment has been done using gpt how much of that assignment has been done using gpt from 0% to 10% 20 30 leading to 100 so right now i mean i don't know about your school, college days in my college days also it was uh, it was there of course but uh, technology was not so advanced but these days for example till recently i was also the officiating uh, vice chancellor of jntu in jntu we used to apply a software uh, for a plagiarism test just to ensure that a student who is submitting his dissertation we used to do it basically for dissertations phd uh, mtech btech dissertations etc so turnitin is the name of that software so we would run every uh, dissertation through turnitin and it will identify if there are passages which have just been copied from somewhere else and uh, we would uh, then uh, jntu had some policy if the plagiarism is more than x percentage then you completely uh, debar that person and all that strict norms were there and uh, very shortly i'm very sure this also will become an additional check gpt 0 every assignment will be checked whether you are using a machine to do your assignment etc so and tomorrow there could be other uh, pitfalls also of course like any other technology one common apprehension is that jobs will be lost and earlier also when i was telling that many of the things that we do manually they can be automated one uh, one uh, uh, <clears throat> one uh, subtext behind this statement could be what about the jobs which will be lost when i am doing something manually hundreds of people are engaged in that when i am uh, doing it with a machine what happens to those hundred people so this is an apprehension which has been raised from uh, almost uh, one century or even more whenever some new technology comes 
what will happen to people but it has been found that new technologies typically create new kinds of jobs and therefore uh, while some kinds of jobs will be lost so for example let us say a judge is there he recruits four assistants just to figure out which are the old judgments to read and quote in the judgment maybe those four assistants may not be doing that thing but then they can be trained or uh, reskilled to do something else also so that is not a very valid kind of a apprehension in my my opinion the opportunities of chat gpt are far more than what the pitfalls could be we should all collectively figure out how the solution how this tool rather can be utilized to advance the uh, economic development of society of people and how to avoid the pitfalls in telangana as many of you would know artificial intelligence is a very focused sector for us the year of 2020 was celebrated by us as the year of ai lots of interesting ai work has happened uh, and continues to happen in fact if no single week passes when we don't evaluate some new ai based uh, proposal some solution we see some poc we see some demo and we feel very enthusiastic about it we have not yet seen too many chat gpt kind of proposals etc coming our way but i'm sure through webinars like this more and more people will get to know what uh, chat gpt is they will do some research they will start reading and uh, i would encourage uh, the ict committee at ftcci also to maintain focus on chat gpt because this is something right now people are using it recreationally but it will have huge government level enterprise level citizen level usage and let us be like many other uh, domains let telangana and all of us all the stakeholders be the first movers in this area as well so once again my greetings and uh, good wishes to all of you unfortunately i will be logging off very shortly i will not be able to take questions but i would request uh, khyati and rest of the organizers if there are some questions in which uh, some uh, some kind of an interaction with government is required please make a note of the question and the questionnaire and uh, pass that uh, detail to me later i'll be happy to follow it up but once again congratulations to the ftcci and to the ict committee for organizing this webinar and thank you very much for inviting me thank you thank you mr jayesh actually we were planning for a uh, day long program and uh, as it was taking little time and our members uh, you know started asking us to do a program we we have done it today i think as you have uh, suggested we will take it up on a sustained basis and uh, we'll work on it thank you yeah thank you thank you so much uh, sir for uh, sharing your uh, personal experience with the chat gpt and my god like the knowledge that you have with regard to this chat gpt i think at least i can say myself that i don't have an account but i think after this session definitely i want to make an account and see what kind what it is and of course you said that there's a lot of uh, opportunity and we have to look at that and of course there will be challenges the pitfall so i think that's where all the experts will come in place to guide and support the whole uh, thing and uh, i think we'll move forward uh, with regard to this and of course uh, as mr jayshanjan said that if there are any questions that you would like to ask our expert you can please pose it um, in the chat box in the q and a session and if there are any questions for uh, mr jayashrenjan you please uh, share it with us which we will compile and then send it to uh, sir <laughs> um i now request uh, the chair uh, of the ict committee mr k mohan raidu to introduce uh, our speaker today who is mr pala prasad also the co chair of our ict committee so uh, over to you mr raidu thank you kathy Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, bala my dear friend and uh, our co-chair he is uh, we work closely on so many forums and fcc is one of the forums uh, mr bala prasad pedigari has been with tcs for over 24 years as a principal consultant and chief innovation officer at communications media and technology unit he is responsible for uh, driving purpose driven transformation program with the technology enablers the research and innovation functions bala is technology thought leader and practitioner in building high performance product development teams 
and the technology practices such as artificial intelligence, enterprise architecture, cloud solutions, design thinking, DevOps, business analytics, modern workplace, performance engineering, and security. I present to you Mr. Bala Prasad Pedigari. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I'm audible. Clear? Yeah, yeah. you are. Yes. My screen visible? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Desh, uh, for setting the beautiful context of uh, how you are seeing the chat GPT in the role of AI and uh, how it is influencing the mankind and industries. Thank you, Anilji and uh, Kathy, for sponsoring this particular event and coming forward to broadcast it at a large scale because this is a definite importance for this particular award. Uh, uh, at the context of uh, ICT, I thank Mohan Raidu for agreeing to do this particular webinar. Thank you. And uh, so let me start out. I believe uh, much of the generative AI and chat GPT has already been spoken with all of you. But in order to set the context and help you understand some more details around uh, what open AI, open AI is trying to do and how this chat GPT really evolved, we need to little uh, go back and understand the evolution of chat generative AI and also understand what Gartner is trying to predict in the space of generative AI and what is the overall outlook in this entire context, which will really propagate us to think about the different use cases. Some of the use cases are already spoken by Jayesh, where he was trying to talk about how judges or the lawyers can be able to uh, understand the volume of use cases by leveraging the power of AI, by going through the millions of documents, the help, of, the help and aid of the chat GPT kind of engines. We'll also try to understand some of the historical work and the research areas associated to the open AI, which led to the uh, development of the chat GPT. Later, I will try to touch upon the chat GPT and associated use cases, which will be highly relevant and useful, which will also open up your thoughts on how you can relate back uh, how chat GPT can be extended once the open AI opens up the API for uh, other areas of the development. Further to that, I'll also try to touch base on the la large language models, which is a basic fundamental construct, which is really allowing people to take advantage of uh, power of AI and trying to help human generated responses. That's what the generative AI is trying to talk about. That will be the overall set of the context for the next 45 minutes. Uh, I would definitely encourage all of you to uh, put down your questions in the Q&A. Uh, we will definitely take up the questions at the end of the session. So, in a nutshell, if I try to, understand, uh, try to understand and explain you about what is generative AI, you need to be very uh, factual in uh, accepting the fact that uh, this is definitely one of the disruptive technology. It really disruptive because it has uh, trained in such a way that it is able to respond like a, a respond and give human kind of responses. Anything which is human in mind definitely will have a lot of uh, touch and uh, touch point for all of us. So it's the kind of innovative results it is trying to provide, it is really bringing out the experiences which is fed into the overall training and also kind of a thought process which has been injected into the machine. When John McCarthy really thought about AI, he was trying to advocate the thought that AI should help machine to think like a human. That is a super intelligence what he was trying to think about and that's where we are trying to approach now with the generative AI. We are still not there, but still getting into that path and direction. Further to that, you also need to understand that what kind of responses it generates. It generates images, artifacts like text responses, audio, video, and also the code. In fact, I can ask generative AI today to write any particular code, like a, write me a code on the palindrome or bubble sort. All the college level programs, what you normally get to know, you can easily get that code construct using the Python language or C or C++, it writes it for us. Probably during the demo time, I'll try to show on that. And it is important that we, it is able to learn from the conversations what you're trying to do means it has got a context associated. So you are trying to converse with any kind of a, a generative AI kind of a tool. It understands the history, it logs the history, it uh, remembers that particular history. And again, of the set of questions, if you go, go back to the previous question, it uses that history as an evidence to reinforce its learning and try to provide that feedback. So, it, so that is what we call as a re reinforcement learning given feedback. That is what uh, it uses to generate the responses and uh, help in uh, understanding the context. 
and most important thing is it has really impacted almost each and every horizontal space you try to talk about media communication healthcare banking fintech what you call education every area has got an impact because of this generative ai which has really took the world by a storm so that's what when gartner is trying to understand who is a top analyst if people doesn't know about gartner they normally publish a lot of trends reports and the outlook of the primary research what they carry out and they today predict around 50% of the low code and no code development platforms will provide text to code functionality means you try to provide a text and the code is generated for you that's a power and in by 2025 you can see that overall 10% of all data is getting produced is coming from the generative ai and similarly there is a lot of focus is giving on out of the 30% of the outbound marketing messages from large organizations will be synthetically generated it means a machine generated data is getting popularized and that is what is going to come as part of your corporate reports and it could be from any kind of a uh discovery process or it could be any kind of a test data generations can also happen like just like in the drug development initiatives can also use generative ai so synthetic generation of the data will be the way you could see in the potential future and the machines are very very powerful in nature in doing that similarly 90% of the material in the quarterly reports what you try to see today which is humanly constructed probably the machine will start putting up that particular constructs so as we move forward in the next 4 to 5 years you can see is the manufacturing industries will also use the generative ai to increase their product development uh, efficiency huge amount of uh, such kind of transformations are getting triggered with the adoption of the generative ai definitely the power of compute the power of storage the power of network is really helping them to uh, ride upon this particular change to the great level you could see in the future many laws getting amended uh, because of the generative ai where they wanted to mark what a mark some of the responses which is coming in so that they really distinguish between the ai generated data and the human generated data similarly you could see that with the help of such kind of an advancements of professionals who are very very procedural in nature functional programmers what we call they need to really go transform themselves to the ai level programmers otherwise they will be uh, very soon Uh, get cannibalized that's where the market is all moving in that direction and one need to retrain and re remodel and retransform in that particular area this is a key trend what gartner is trying to predict and one need to be aware how the changes are getting triggered in this space as i say you need to understand some of the use cases i'm just trying to bring one of the industry which is media which is highly popular for all of us which we can easily relate you can see that uh, generative you you use cases like contextual content uh, for any particular specific input you have it can create the content for you you need not worry about it similarly the ad distributions what it coming you want to have a target today we try to do using some of the predicted algorithms uh, understand the context understand a lot of mining which we will try to do but today automation of such kind of emails contextual ad copies everything can be possibly done through this uh, uh, gpt engines similarly translation and transcription in fact Uh, uh, as jay mentioned about uh, open ai there is a lot of investment done by the microsoft now they are integrating gpt into their teams teams once that get in- integrated what it does every meeting what you do it will start having the full transcript of that particular meeting it will have the ability to record the minutes it will have the ability to record the actions from the talk what it has listened and it will have the ability to schedule the meetings based on the actions which has been discussed so post that particular meeting is over once in the teams you already have your minutes action items meeting scheduled what else you need such is the power of uh, online meetings can be combined with the power of gpt once it is integrated very soon you will be start seeing that kind of a change coming out into the teams similarly the content curation area which is having a high high impact space i would say it has got lot of uh, we normally get lot of data which is coming in you need to keep curating it look for the quality of the data and such curation of the data applying the quality checks from the multiple sources can be easily done now paraphrasing techniques what ai uses the precise writing techniques what ai uses will be able to curate the content you may have a 100 page document and you need one page executive summary you submit that 100 page document and you ask for an executive summary ai can give you now within no time so understanding that full context of the 
mining that and establishing the uh, summary of that summarization is quite easy for the gpt engines the similarly the creative naming uh, for the podcast or blogs if you are interested to look at you can submit the podcast and ask what should be the great in names possible names it suggests for you looking into the overall listening to the particular audio once it is trained similarly the ov and video restoration area if you feel some improvements need to be done some edits to be done such suggestions also can be brought in so some providing that amazing and automated digital experience in the media industry is going uh, taking through a storm and they are leveraging this particular gpt techniques to make it highly highly uh, valuably possible similarly extending further to the specific cross industry use cases we are really looking at every industry has got some prominence in this space you can talk about the location services if you wanted have a, a uncharted geographical areas where the satellite images you need to pass through and get the map views you can get it and similarly the content management we already discussed on the quality image uh, improvements if you want to do it is possible and in the drug discovery and the drug development area to identify the potential diseases looking at the historical evidences of such treatments it's possible now and again from text to code generation for the low code and low code, no code platforms definitely possible in fact uh, dal e one of the research program in parallel to the chat gpt which has been run through is currently live you can easily sign up where you can just give a text and ask for an image and it provides that particular image different sets of images will be provided and you can choose in fact if you want to have a logo designs also possible logo designs you can get it from that particular dal e we'll try to take a look at the demo at the end similarly the in the marketing space you can drive and target that target market campaigns for the consumers with the test data generations and lot of report generations can be possible today if i want to go and first search for any particular document to what happens i get a link to the document where i need to go and look into the space but with the chat gpt kind of an engines when i search i get the relevant content text which is already scanned through that particular document which simplifies my effort which simplifies my time while those things are happening we need to be cautious of certain other hidden dangers which we are going to touch again at the late similarly in the surveillance space lot of photo generations for different angles if you want to identify a particular image or a person or a avatar it's easy now so certain times your images are blurred certain times you might be having a side angle images such kind of a trained images if it is available it is able to discover from the repository and say you are referring to this particular individual similarly in the manufacturing industry you can see there is a huge amount of focus is given where this generative pre trained transformers which is a generative ai uh, look into the reinforcement learning models which can be less biased which can have a explainability to the decisions what it makes and able to provide that kind of a next generation production design or any kind of a development changes which is required so you can have a altered design changes if the new car is coming into the market there is a lot of work done in the designs so this designs when it is feeded into the system you can ask for the different designs different models looking into the feedback given by the uh, users the feedback when combined with the designs the new designs can be emerged such kind of a use cases are possible using the generative ai the those in a nutshell i wanted to set the context from the generative ai but you need to understand the open ai is the one which has spearheaded this particular initiative and they have really invested them as part of the research laboratories and combined themselves with the open ai inc which has been founded 2015 by sam altman and helen mask by pledging around 1, 1 billion dollars they have done a lot of research in this particular area uh, means they team and one of the key uh, three different initiatives this kick dot is a chat gpt codex and the dali chat gpt you all know about it it provides a kind of a human tech kind of a responses codex it's like a uh, assistive programming more programmer it's a kind of a parallel programming while you are coding uh, there's a github copilot which is available uh, it also codes along with you and also tells you what kind of a mistakes you are making what are the different extensions you can use what kind of a new algorithms you can use and uh, what is the optimized way of programming the things it suggests it's a copilot that's the reason it gives dali is another one where it generates images using the text what you try to provide this is the powerful uh, gpt3 based natural language transform models uh, which currently or uh, jointly owned by the microsoft while they are invested in that 
10 million, 10 billion dollars into the open ai now they are pumping more money and integrating this entire suit into their microsoft office and other components extending the thought further just wanted to give what azure is trying to do because microsoft when you're trying to talk it's important that you understand how they are integrating this open ai into the cloud and how they are extending these particular services for the people who are developing their solutions onto the cloud so today the Azure Cognitive Services is currently getting bundled with the OpenAI service models, which is really opening up for the developer community to leverage API-based techniques for including the GPT-3 models, Codex models, and the embedded model series. This is helping them uh, for generating the new content by training the existing content. You have witnessed the fact that whatever chat GPT is trying to give you the response is based on the millions of the document it has scanned through till April 30, 2021 only. But anything content which is generated and anything which is recently done, it will not be able to answer. Similarly, the summarization techniques, I told you about 100 page document and you need one, one page executive summary, you can get it. Semantic search and uh, natural language to the code translations means text to code, what we call. All these things are getting com combined there. And uh, today it is completely based on the few Davinci, uh, means GPT-3 models like Davinci, Babbage, Ada, Curie. These are the code names which has been given for the GPT-3, which is providing that particular ability and framework for you to look at. And today, <coughs> limited access is available. Very soon, it will be available for the public for consumption. And this open AI will have a huge amount of impact on the overall development community to develop new use cases as we open up. As I mentioned, there are another important area of research which is happening, which is the OpenAI Codex. Now, within the OpenAI Codex, one of the powerful areas is a GitHub Copilot, which is completely based on the GPT-3. When you are trying to develop the things, and if you feel that I need a uh, pilot programmer who is able to guide then and there itself on the best practice, then and there itself on the security practices, GitHub Copilot is wonderful to play. In fact, if you have the Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio IDE, you can install this particular plugin and it will really power up your entire programming model technique and ensure that you are not committing the mistakes at the development time. It will also simplify your overall effort in employing the best practices, security practices, uh, and also the and it ensures all the cross-cutting concerns like performance, security, availability, and such kind of non-functional areas. This copilot uh, uh, writes alongside the code uh, developer in the text editor. That's what I was trying to come in, mention. It also tries to convert comments to the code so that there is auto programming which is enabled. And it also recommends and provides alternatives to your code base, which improves your programming style. And it can be accessed and installed in the Visual Studio Code, as I mentioned. Similarly, Codex apps are also extended for the Pigma and uh, Figma. Figma is a kind of a collaborative interface development for design. So basically, it will help you to convert that entire programmer friendly areas very new. And it is uh, generally used as part of many of the marketing development code bases. And similarly, there is another code uh, block, which is called Replete. It's again a collaborative programming, a very, very explainable code. It can be generating Replete when you are trying to program. It will allow the multiple programmers to work on the same code base and also helps you to improve the code base then and there itself. So it does not need for you to do the testing to improve the code or review to do the code. There is a background check which will run, which will allow you to improve the code then and there, there itself. And similarly, Codex apps is also extended into the warp, which is again a, a kind of a framework which is trying to use for the Rust based command line terminal. Very, very intuitive, and it tries to guide you. You need not remember your syntax. You need not remember the commands. You, as long as you have the intent, what you need to do, it will guide you through that. Similarly, there is a machine uh, tool which is available, which is plugged to generate the Java code unit test templates. Again, automatically reviewing the code. You need not worry about writing the unit test cases. Machine it will generate once the code is submitted to it. These are some of the advancements which are happening in the OpenAI space this will really power up and accelerate your current functions. That is the importance of the OpenAI Codex. Now, as I mentioned, that is all about the background of the generative AI and OpenAI research framework, which led to the GPT, what you see today. Just to, before getting into chat, GPT wanted to touch upon the evolution and what is the G, before GPT, what was there. 
we have seen natural language processing models, which is really helping you to drive uh, a lot of uh, um, analysis, question answers, textual entailment, semantic similarity based on certain specific task what it has been given. And, but it is never be able to generate some kind of a new thing. It has been completely annotated and provided. Natural language processing models are based on that. But if you really look at the GPT evolution, you would need to understand that uh, GPT-1 was the first one which is completely trained and supervised, where nine out of 12 times the models were compared on. It was able to successfully do, but it was limited capacity to perform the action. But GPT-2, that's another variant which came in, seven out of eight tested language modeling data sets it is able to provide in a zero shot means you are able to program the things and generate the code in seven different languages in the gpt3 when you look at it has been trained and coached on 175 billion parameters means that many relationships it has able to create and around 570 gigabyte of the data it has been trained over now what you see in november 30 2022 it's a kind of a dialogued and conversational model which has really driven. It is not only dialogue driven, but optimization language model has been chosen there so that it generates a lot of a human-like responses, which you can not make out whether it is a machine-generated response or it is a um, uh, human-generated response because it takes care of your tone and style of the response also. Further to that, it also has an ability to generate the code and also perform the creative writing. And that's where the worry comes now, where, where the kids' creative writing skills can go, go down. Or if people start using the chat GPT for their own homework, their ability to think can go down. So as you want to use GPT techniques, you should complement the things rather than killing your own creativity. That is my view. So extending further to your thought, understanding the GPT-3 in detail, uh, as already mentioned uh, by many of us, uh, it uh, stands for the Generative Pre-trained Transformer Model. And uh, basically, it's an unsupervised transformer language model. Means you are not training the model in a supervised mode, but you're uh, asking to use the reinforcement you language human feedback model. That's what we call. And it will allow you to learn by looking into the knowledge history and looking into the content. It gets newly freshed into the system. It uses that and it expands its thinking. In fact, today, uh, as we speak, uh, there is also thought given for the GPT-4. But I don't know when the GPT-4 will come. But if that comes, it will be another massive change in the entire marketplace because the ability to perform the things beyond and stay current and recent will be very, very high using, using the GPT-4 because the number of parameters is almost three, four times what I see. So. You can see that a similar kind of a tools are getting extended as part of the Microsoft Bing search. It is also extended as part of the Google Bard. And it is also trying to power up many of the initiatives like Google, uh, means OpenAI Codex, GitHub Copilot, and DALI. All these things are driving the change, which is completely based on the meta-learning models. And it is completely using the petaflop kind of a compute power, and uh, which is huge in nature. So what is ChatGPT? Why it is so popular? And why it is becoming so much adoptive and very, very uh, viral in nature for everyone to start using? It is because it provides a mimic, uh, human conversations. Anything which is human conversations will have a direct impact on the emotions what they carry. It can generate essays for you. It can write a teleplays for you. It can write stories for you. It can write different articles on the new trends. If you can think about till 2021, it can do. And it can also write lyrics. Probably some of the lyrics in the movies can be written using the chat GPT going forward. Some of the narratives are so human-like, it's very, very hard for you to uh, check. Even though some of the tools which are available, which can tell today whether your response is GPT generated, but again, uh, there is an ample amount of uh, uh, error rate is there even in the GPT-0. We need to be aware of the fact. And there is above everything, the popularity of the chat, chat GPT is high because of the one important area. One is moderation filters applied for discriminatory or offensive conversation. Anything which is offensive in nature, anything which is hurting any particular individual, it does not respond. That content moderation and the kind of a policies which has been injected as part of the chat GPT is very, very powerful. That is the basic difference between the chat GPT and other uh, GPT tools which are available. I'll try, try to touch upon some of the tools 
which also does a similar thing, but it does not have the policy and moderation techniques embedded. That is a big difference. When you try to ask the same questions to the two or three GPT engines, you'll see what kind of responses they generate. <clears throat> as I mentioned, 175 billion parameters were used as part of training this particular model. And you need to remember that reinforcement learning via human feedback. This is the technique which uses, which makes the entire, entire chat GPT to be a org aim to augment the creative work. And I, I see this is having a huge amount of supercomputing infrastructure, which is making it possible today. Otherwise, it's highly impossible for scanning through the millions of documents using uh, the bit of flop of compute power to give me immediately give you the response, which is very, very contextual in nature. So that's uh, that in a nutshell, but if I want to summarize the view in one particular block for you, what is GPT evolution? You can compare GPT-1 to chat GPT in terms of the model. That is a functionality feature size, what you try to compare, the number of parameters involved. Second is about the capability. The differentiating capability with other GPT engines and chat GPT is a conversational tasks. Similarly, the training data set, a lot of data which has been used as part of the chat GPT is coming from the conversational data which has been fed into the system. And similarly, uh, from the availability angle today, you can available as part of the having a login as part of the open AI chat GPT to try out. But very soon, you need to put yourself into the wait list for getting access to the API. And similarly, language understanding definitely has got more abilities comparing to the GPT-1. From the language generation, it is more conversational driven. That is a big differentiation what you try to see in the chat GPT evolutions when compared to the other uh, techniques. Looking into the depth of the use cases, this is very critical and important for anyone who is trying to use chat GPT. Today, GPT programs can be used for generating the documentation of the code base. Documentation is very, very key. So many times it so happens that to you, we get into a maintenance projects and people say that I have the code, but I don't have a document. Such time, such instances can be avoided by submitting this particular code base and asking for the document to be generated. Machine can understand, interpret, and provide that meaningful documentation for further understanding. Meaningful designs also can be generated very soon. Generative code snippets, basically generic programs which are available, generic challenges which is available, if you can provide that, uh, what kind of a code you want, it can generate the code base. It means you can say that I need a particular code on uh, to find out uh, uh, shortest path. If you want, uh, if you have a, a traveling salesman problem and you say that I want uh, shortest way the salesman will travel to complete his tasks, it can give you that kind of a program by taking the metadata inputs. Conversion of code across. I have a code in Python. I want to convert into C. Can I do it or any other? program model, I can do it. It will be able to provide that. Research and analysis on any topic. You need to understand uh, primary trends or secondary research areas uh, in any particular topic, like 5G, which is very, very hot in nature. How the 5G use cases are evolving? What is the different use cases World Economic Forum is trying to discuss in different areas, like healthcare in 5G, fintech in 5G, manufacturing 5G? You can ask, and it will be able to curate that particular content and give you. Education question and the pace. In fact, today, as I was saying that one of my team, I uh, asked them to construct a uh, course where on the metaverse. And on the metaverse, when we constructed the course where the team was asking, the talent development team was asking, can we get a Q&A for that? Constructing 30, 40 questions from the available course where is highly difficult. It takes a lot of time. When the time is crunched and you need to immediately generate the responses, you can use these GPT techniques to generate a Q&A pairs so that it is easy for pe <coughs> people to go and uh, submit that at the initial level. However, you can cure it further to add new and variety of questions. Similarly, the social media space, hugely used. I mentioned about the media spy side, from the classification to the post, to the idea generation, to the summarization, uh, GPT techniques can be completely leveraged. Marketing and branding, lot of content requires a high value articulation. And value articulation, when you're trying to look from the annual reports, you can definitely get it from the best in class trained methods as part of the GPT. It can provide the valuable storytelling way of submitting your uh, conceptualizing and sharing your reports and also uh, sharing a very, very professional reports with the right language with the value proposition and value articulation. Similarly, you can make my story is one of the area where you can look at 
uh, you can use the open API case, you can submit the characters and you can say, this is a theme, generate a story for me. It creates beautiful stories. No wonder you may see the future Hollywood, Bollywood movies. You may not have a story writers, but the stories can come from the GPT tools. That is a possibility. Help desk and customer service. Uh, you can also look into the possibilities of personalized chatbots. Today, uh, we normally buy any particular product. If you have a problem with the product, you reach out to the help desk by calling that number. But with this personalized chatbots, you will be able to communicate to the chatbots, which can <coughs> humanly guide you to solve your problem by yourself, making you self-service enabled. Such kind of scenarios can really cut down the cost of the support space for the enterprises and help in creating a personalized contextualized experience for the end users who are using your products. So, and similarly, the transcript analysis for the customer services, it will also help you to understand the customer needs better and respond to them. And email responses, what you see today, uh, as I mentioned, right, um, you, in the teams, if it is integrated, you can have a automated emails, automated uh, summary notes, automated scheduling of the meetings is also possible. Some, similarly, the personalized email responses can be integrated using the GPT. Today, when we speak, GPT has been used for different purposes, for a different purposes. When I said someone was using the MBA degree exam at Wharton University, GPT passed out that particular exam with a B grade. Similarly, someone wanted to crack at a state medical licensing exam, it cracked it with 60%. Someone using the GPT to crack the AWS certified cloud practitioner exam, it passed with 800 score. Psychology Today Verbal Linguistic language Intelligence IQ test, 147 it scored, which is almost like a 99.9 percentile. .9 SAT exam for the undergraduate programs people attend, for 1600 marks, it was able to crack around 1020, which is 62.5 percent time. So when you try to look at, you can see that it has got a huge amount of uh, usage and leverage people have taken in the different directions. But these are some of the achievements people try to talk about in a good or a bad way. But one need to be aware, the policy and moderation is a differentiator between the chat GPT and other tools. It does not encourage any kind of a response which is leading to the hate, harassment, violence, harm, sexual, political spam or deception or malware. All these categorizations of the responses are taken care. If anything which is falling under this particular category, it will very politely say, I'm sorry, I'm not trained. I'm not authorized to give you this response. Such policy and moderation made this particular tool to be highly, highly popular rather than getting into your responses which can create a hatred to that particular tool. And I mentioned that GPT-4 road high head is very, very, uh, <coughs> very much there, but it is not yet announced. But if it goes there, then you can see the volume of uh, training, which can go from 175 billion parameters to the 100 trillion parameters. That's a huge amount of transformation and the amount of technology and amount of content, it will have the enrichment of understanding will be within the globe, everything. So is that ChatGPT is the only thing which is available as part of the large language model? What are the other tools which are available? So if I try to ask some of the large language models, which is beyond GPT-3 and ChatGPT, you can see that Codex, OPT, ChatGeny, Sparrow, Palm, Replica, Lambda, Galactica, Bloom, these are some of the popular large language models which are used as part of the question answering document summarization, text generation, sentence completion, and many more translation areas. But one thing you need to remember, they do the same thing what ChatGPT does, but they do not have the policy and moderation areas. I'll show you during the demo time uh, how these particular responses are different. Replica is one of the very, very popular AI platform and very, very interactive and personalized uh, uh, genuine human interactions you can carry out there and uh, it can have a private experience as an AI friend. But remember, um, the more you interact with Replica, the more it learns. Initially, it will not have any particular context around you, but it will, once you start interacting, it will try to understand your mood, it will try to understand the context, what your likes, dislikes, and accordingly, it will act like a good friend for you as a long term. It's a kind of a good companion, but uh, again, uh, more you connected, you will be losing the social connections social human connection. So we, we be very cautious of using the replica there. Chat Jenny, 
uh, very very powerful uh, chatbot tool which is available today uh, this is very popular because uh, it tries to understand uh, news facts and all the particular events again this has been uh, knowledge base has been trained till 2021 only and uh, whatever is available till 2021 it will be able to act appropriately response but remember again it does not have any policy and moderation areas if you ask him to uh, ask chat genie to respond with any particular joke on any individual it tries to flat the joke it does not say that i cannot give you a joke which is creating a hatred on any particular individual but chat gpt doesn't give you the joke it refuses to give the response bloom again a very very good open source alternative uh, which is available today it is completely based on the auto regression based uh, large language model uh, and uh, keeping the prompts in mind it uh, tries to use computational resources which are industrially scalable and uh, it understands 46 different languages of the text and it also understand and trains on the 13 programming languages so uh, so you can get the code base written in 13 different program languages using the bloom that's the advantage of using the bloom opt uh, which is a open pretrain transformer which is coming from the uh, facebook's meta's version of the gpt and uh, they are trying to use as a replacement for the gpt area uh, there is a lot of research which is still going on but it has got one uh, seventh of the carbon footprint of the gpt3 means it's still a long way to go for this foundation model to click in so but still uh, valuable to uh, try it out galactica is again one of the another meta ai and papers which has been again open source large language model which is available again it uses around 120 billion parameters while gpt uses 175 billion parameters and this particular galactica has been trained on a lot of scientific papers and research materials anyone who is going in the research area and trying to experiment on the research function this particular space would be means this galactica tool will be highly useful for him to get the primary research functions suppose if you wanted to patent a particular thing he wanted to search whether this particular content has been patented already or not we'll get that validation done so similarly if he wants any particular content on it, the primary area of his research as the reference we can get that pieces of the paper also such a kind of a scanning is highly possible through the galactica palm is again a pathways language model which is uh, before the bard they were using this google has already coming out and launching bard but google palm is a pathways language model it has got lot of uh, capability around language sound and vision so it has a lot of it's a versatile tool which can take all three things into one one level of input and able to provide you the output accordingly it tries to adaptively learn the things and able to respond to you faster lambda is another uh, dialogue applications by google which is today very very powerful what we call and it is currently using the concept of generating the dialogue so means like just like a human conversations you are trying to use and it is available as part of the google's ai test kitchen and it is available only for the few developers but you can put yourself by registering onto the wait list so they have this say, ai test kitchen there where you can go and try to enroll yourself and put yourself into the wait, wait list sparrow is another area which is coming out from the deep mind and uh, again this again a dialogue agent and uh, it has got an ability to cite resources deep so this uh, reinforcement training training is learning methods are used here but again uh, it does not uses the policy in moderation to the extent what gpt does so trying to touch upon some of the important areas the hidden danger one need to remember is all the content which is getting generation generated uh, you cannot trust easily there is a lot of content which can have a security breach there is a lot of content which can also provide you with falsified information so it's very important that whatever the code it is generating you need to check for the security issues and vulnerabilities whatever the responses it is giving you need to apply your own ethical thinking to see whether it is ethical to use or not so there are a lot of hidden dangers you need to unlock that hidden dangers before you start using it as it is having said that i just wanted to touch upon few of the demo pieces for your reference uh, i want to uh, look at uh, dali first huh? okay now let let me say this okay i want to say that um, dal e this is again a, a engine which is available everyone you can go and subscribe to this dali 
and you can just write anything. Uh, I want uh, uh, Superman, Batman, uh, I'm sorry, Batman, and Spider-Man images. It's quite simple. Once you give that, <clears throat> it tries to generate the images of that. You can see. Similarly, if you say that I want furniture, which is purple in color. Office furniture, say for instance. So this is like a text to the human. Now, text to the image is what it kind of generates, and it is again using all the possible combinations of the AI, the GPT AI. This is one utility of it. I'm just trying to come here. This is the chat GPT interface for your reference. You can go to the open uh, beta.openai.com, subscribe that uh, using your Google Mail or any other mail which is it allows. Once you get, you can try it now, chat GPT. Let us say I'm just trying to introduce myself. I want to touch upon the, it understands the context. I'm saying my name is Bala. Let's see what it responds. Okay, I'm asking uh, chat GPT, can you tell me top trends in ICT area? I'm not expanded ICT for it. Let us see if it understands. Information communication technology, it has understood. And it is trying to give you the different trends associated to the ICT area and how it is influencing, influencing the ICT. You can talk about AI, you can talk about IoT, you can talk about the 5G networks it is trying to bring in. You can see, you can also talk about the blockchain, cloud computing, like multi-cloud, which is trying to get the power of it. Now, very beautifully trying to narrate you about uh, five to six bullet points and cybersecurity space it's trying to touch upon, visual and augmented metaverse reality, what it is trying to touch upon, how it is changing the entire thing. And once it enlists, it tries to summarize and say, this is what it is. Now you could understand it is able to derive based on the data it has got till 2021. Now there's a match which got concluded uh, yesterday, right? India versus Australia. What is the result of India versus Australia? This match. This is only to demonstrate that it does not respond to you. It gives you the context, but it does not give you the, oh, I forgot to ask for the test match result. That is the reason, okay? Let me ask for the result. What is the result of in versus Australia test match happened yesterday? You can see that it says it cannot respond with because it has not trained on the real time information what it can talk about. This is an indication for you to tell that it is not trained. No, after asking so many things, I'm asking, okay. Now I will say that, okay, tell me a joke. Don't take it seriously. I'm just trying to say, Jubiden. Uh, Let's see what, what it says. It does not offer any joke. It has got a policy and moderation technique and it will not talk about anything which is political or biased. This is trying to demonstrate to you how the policy and moderation of the responses it takes. Now I'm trying to ask, what is my name? I gave him, gave chat GPT. It should understand the context and it should give my name back. So. So you can see the policy and moderation as one of the capability. You can see that it is able to understand your question and interpret the expectations according to the context and view the trends. It is, you can also see the reinforcement learning, which is allowing it to understand the history and respond back with that. So this is the capability of the chat GPT. You know, but if you try to take your knowledge to some other tools like OPT or chat Jenny, let's see if a chat Jenny. Okay. 
here uh, it was just just before the session i was asking uh, but let let me ask what are the trends in ict so, similar capability does exist but response varies it may take some time because of the compute capability and whatever it has got you can see more or less similarly it gives you the response but the human kind of response what you see the response given by the chat gpt is different from what you see it from the chat genie the human text response is coming there because it gives you the pre text followed by the points and also concludes the things but here it is gives you the blind 6 to 7 bullet points that is the difference and uh, <clears throat> again this this model is similarly the opt is another one which is available but here you can control what is the total length you want to uh, respond similarly i'll give it here and trends in ict okay crosswalk it is asking so it, this this kind of a tools does not have that policy moderation and this is, does not provide you the human text response it does give you the response but it takes time because of the compute capability what it has i was asking for the trends in ict while it does uh, just wanted to let you know that this are some of the facts which is chat gpt is empowering the amount of uh, gpt based use cases is enormous as part of the overall trends in different landscape of industries uh, you can leverage gpt for the talent development you can use gpt for the hr you can use gpt for um, different industry sectors also and you can see here the trends in ict so this understands differently contributes differently and tries to give you a different view and uh, this is more driven by the percentage so if you change the change your question or change your pattern your response also changes but you can see how uh, each of the gpts based on the content it has been developed based on the model and training it has been given able to provide the more you train the more parameterization is done to the model you have the better response capability coming in so when you compare with the chat gpt opt or chat genie it's a number of parameters which is involved in training is different that is the reason the entire responses changes that is a key and i just wanted to touch upon that so that you understand the overall power of chat gpt as a move forward in case if you have wanted to experiment further there is a way you can generate open ai api key you can log in create your account verify your email id once you verify and put down your code which comes in your phone you have access to the secret key as part of the api key and once you submit your api key you will be able to generate different kinds of a stories and uh, use uh, gpt uh, to power up your needs with that i close my session and i'll be happy to answer your questions thank you so that that was really insightful <clears throat> bala sir and thank you for guiding us through so i have some uh, questions from the participants uh, the first one is sure. uh, uh mrs uh, mrs arundhati rao says what's the ethical way of working with chat gpt similar to the way we refer to credible links to the person person slash work ethical way of working with chat gpt basically uh, honestly there is no specific uh, answer to this because uh, the different people use uh, for different purpose but ethical is something which is subject to the individual i would say and uh, if you are asking from the accessibility standpoint the ethical way to access is having a subscription to the open ai and once you have a subscription to the open ai and have obtained that secret key you can leverage that and use the open ai apis to generate uh, responses or train your uh, content and data say for an instance you are working in the hr industry you have lot of resumes to screen your 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 data boundary is only your resumes anything beyond that you don't want so you give that particular boundary of resumes and you say that you get trained what these resumes are and then you ask 
I am looking for Java skill. Tell me which is the best profile here. So it's all about you. You are having ethical access to the data. You are using the curated content and leveraging it. But uh, but the practice is leveraged by individual changes to uh, one person to another person. So I cannot comment further on that. Thank you, Bala. Uh, I, we have uh, Sri T H Chaudhary Hanuman Chaudhary Garu. He has uh, 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 raised his hand. Let's invite him to uh, ask question. Vishal, sure. will you invite him to the panelists? Yes, I will. Sir, uh, Hanuman Chaudhary Garu, please. A few observations and a few questions. Sure. Yeah, please. Question sure. number one, Mr. Jay said he referred to the speed with which things are happening. Yeah. Now, it the telephone, it took 75 years to reach 50 million users. The mobile phone, it took only 12 years. The smartphone mm. took only four years to double from 1 billion to 2 billion. This is the speed with which things are happening. And can we keep pace with this? That is, the people are too young to retire and too old to be retrained. That is one of the philosophical questions. Number two, all the China and USA, they have among between themselves. 75% of the blockchain patents. China, US, and Japan, these three together have 78% of all the artificial intelligence patents. What is it that India has got? Now, China, I think, is now a superpower because of artificial intelligence of its concentration. In 1990, as long ago as 1997, Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparov, the world chess champion. For the last 15 years, Manipal Hospital is using IBM computers to, to check as well as prescribe uh, the cure for cancer. So artificial intelligence, if it takes over so many functions of human thought, what is it that India is doing? It is China, America, Japan, these are the three superpowers. In fact, they are going to colonize the minds of the entire world. So this is a very, very great danger that is going to happen. Now, the amount of information that is being generated is the volume of data is doubling every two years. Since 2005, 300 fold, 300 fold it has increased and every day 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is being generated. A quintillion is 10 to the power 18. This much data, who is digesting? It, it, it is the American and the Chinese companies which are extracting this inf information. For example, for the last 15 years, China has been exfiltrating, not infiltrating, exfiltrating the information that we have with regard to our armed forces, with regard to our railway network, with regard to our telecom network, etc., etc., etc. So my question is, what is it that India is contributing? Are we are only using what somebody else is developing? That means we will be colonized, just we had been colonized by Britain in the past. I would like you to have there is a book here, wonderful book. You may be aware of this one. Artificial Intelligence and the Future of Power. The Future of Power that is by Raju Malhotra of the Infinity Foundation in the United States of America. Some comments of yours? No, all, all, all the facts, what you mentioned is absolutely true, sir. And uh, there is definite contribution which will be coming from India also. It's not only the users, but there is a lot of mind share which comes from India to the world in that direction. I see that uh, power of AI is really unfolding in the different parts of the geography. 
and uh, making a tremendous impact in that entire journey of every industry acceptance and every sector will be benefiting from these changes. And, that is true, but what is in India? Are we having? Is there any awareness? For example, you are in the Tata's. I am also a Tata's TCS fellow. Mm -hmm. Right. We contributed fifty million dollars to Harvard Business School. What for? Similarly, every newly rich company in India, whether it is Wipro or Infosys, they have been contributing tens of millions of dollars to Harvard University, and they are mm -hmm. using our brain, our power, in order to collect the data and then prescribe to us what we should think and what we should not do. In fact, the next month I am going to hold a, uh, a three or four day conference on this issue. That is, are we contributing? And you take TCS. F. C. Kohli is a wonderful man. Nineteen sixty nine, he started the TCS. I was associated with him. Now, are, have we generated any intellectual property? That is the question. We are using somebody else's intellectual property. Yeah. And. By this artificial intelligence, there is a great risk of jobs going away. What are the jobs? Recently, in an article, <clears throat> receptionists and administrative assistants can be undertaken by this artificial intelligence. Warehouse workers, delivery drivers, so on, so on, and so forth. All of them must stand to lose their jobs. Now, how do who to, how to retrain them? If even in the IT sector, middle-aged people are there. If they are not retrained, they are too young to be retired. Sir, Chaudhary uh, Garu, in fact, I'm going to questions. Ki, uh, right. Kindly, uh, okay. I, 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 I expressed my yeah. fears. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you leaders in India how to apply your mind. One of the problems is ethics for the robots. Thank you. I will stop here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, we have another question. And someone asked that, will chat GPT has, uh, like, does chat GPT has such potential to remove some conventional jobs like teachers and all? Yes. Yes. It does. It does. Uh, some of the conventional jobs are definitely under the threat like uh, junior lawyers will go and search for the content and it could be the advisory services in the financial area that could be also be a threat anything which is a kind of a manual in nature and it goes to refer to your uh, historical data and try to give you a specific recommendations all those kind of a jobs are under threat but it will open up the new jobs new way of doing the things for more intellectually trained people correct absolutely said yeah, but in India, our education is awful. That's right. That's right. I think Anil, 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 Anil ji also raised his hand. If uh, he has any questions. So you have any questions? No, no, I'm not having any question. I'm a not a tech guy. I know how to use that's all Google and <laughs> chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> How to use? I now I understood. <laughs> right, right. Thank you. Thank so, you. Bharat, there is one more question. Is there any privacy limitation applied to get the to the Chat GPT, and how the user uh, the the user of Chat GPT is saved by law provisions? Uh, so basically, it is. Uh... Whatever the responses, what it generates, uh, it's specific to that particular individual. It is not shared outside that particular boundary. Chat GPT definitely uses a policy, moderation, and privacy and security kind of a uh, principles as part of the response and architecture and design what it has withhold. Say, for instance, Vishal, you had a conversation with Chat GPT. Your conversations is never shared outside your account. It is there for you, and it is not easy for anyone to hack or track it. But it may use some of your conversation responses as an intelligent to generate some intelligence which can be used for the other people's responses. But it does not indicate that it's because of Vishal I gained this particular knowledge. It will use that for the uh, understanding and uses the reinforcement learning for that purpose. So there is a lot of context, a lot of privacy. All these things are maintained. That's the reason I showed you, right? Uh, uh, anything which is 
having that any policy violations or moderation violations it does not respond that is the reason chat gpt is highly successful when you compared with other gpt large language models which are available in the industry today yes sir uh, one very relevant question to be very precise because uh, like say 3 4 years uh, down the line careers like data scientists and uh, business analysts were a lot in demand so people were taking up such, such courses so the question is will there be job cut for market research data scientists professionals and all that will be there it is not going anywhere because those people are key people who are going to provide that intelligence to the model see obviously the this large language models need a lot of uh, help from the data scientists market analysts who can provide that supervised learning uh, responses they they are the people who will be able to tell whether whatever their responses has been given is correct or not and uh, they need to train the models they need to design the models and that need to be induced into the model and uh, these people jobs will be there and it will continue to evolve no change in that and it will be in demand sure evolution is the biggest strength of being a human so the final question i believe for the day from mr nagar rajesh and it says that how this is going to impact like such ai technologies like chat gpt and we talked about chat gpt 4 how is uh, this going to impact uh, like things like irrigation and agriculture sector especially in crop produce so basically today if you are asking uh, even uh, in tcs probably hanuman chaudhary sir also will uh, echo with me that tcs has invested a lot in m krishi where we are trying to give advisory services to the irrigation industry or the uh, ag- agriculture persons where you do the soil testing you try to provide the moisture testing you try to advise what kind of a crops at what day, time of the uh, climate or what time of the calendar year you need to plant to get a better yield so today it's all app driven tomorrow it will be conversational driven means the person a layman who does not understand any kind of english language he can ask his question on a telugu or whatever the language of choice it does not need to be worry about whether the other person is able to give it or not but it can ask to the gpt uh, in the way he wants that is what the natural language processing is all about there is no need for formal text and it's a system which able to understand the intent it is able to understand the context from where he is asking and able to respond that will simplify the conversational capability of a layman for solving some of his immediate problems say for an instance he wanted to go and get one particular service from a government he doesn't know whom to approach how to approach gpt could be the way to interact and get that guidance uh, this is a place i should go and this is a place uh, i need to ask for and able to get my response done so the impact is quite high uh, simplification is the mantra for the using of the gpt to serve the human kind and again i am trying trying to tell you unemployment is not yielded because of the new technology introduces whenever the new technology comes new jobs gets arised new form of jobs gets uh, created so we need to look from that angle however the monotonous repetitive job functions unintelligent job functions can go away so i think we are at the scheduled time so for any other questions you can write to me i'll drop my email id in the chat box you can write to me at vishal@rateccci.in and i'll write my mail id in the chat box as well and we'll surely get those answered and now i'd like to uh, like invite mr pankaj divan co-chair of the ict committee of pcci for the vote of thanks thanks vishal uh i would like to start by thanking the president of ftcci mr anil agarwal and his office for allowing this kind of a webinar uh, on a very hot topic and the fact that uh, almost 85% of the people have remained throughout the webinar shows the kind of interest that is there in this topic of course uh, there was a overwhelming response that came i would also like to thank uh, the ict chair mr mohan raidu for guiding bala and uh, all of us to conduct this program uh, the ceo ms khyati narwani and her office vishal and the entire staff of fct cci for all the logistics that has gone behind organizing this program uh, having bala as part of ict committee is a good fortune for the ict committee of fct cci and the simplicity with which he spoke about the topic today uh, i'm sure everyone in the audience would appreciate how a complex technology and a complex and new concept like chat gpt 
was explained explained with such simplicity so thank you bala thank you so much for first thank of all you. volunteering to take up this uh, webinar and uh, second to come up with such a simplified and uh, elaborate explanation of the topic i'm sure the all all the audience uh, will go back enriched with this information which you have capsuled in about an hour's time and of course uh, we would like to thank our audience uh, without whom any of these initiatives are of no meaning uh, thank you for the overwhelming response and registration and then thank you for your uh, overwhelming attendance and staying back for the entire duration of the webinar and asking such intelligent questions in fact one of the uh, simple ways of measuring the success of a program is the interaction of the audience and we've had innumerable questions all through the webinar and very smart and intelligent questions so thank you so much it only encourages ict committee to come up with more such programs and possibly also in a physical mode uh, so i would request uh, the president uh, ftcci mr anil agarwal if he wants to uh, say something at the end of this but from my side i would like to thank one and all and of course uh, 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 not to miss mr jayesh ranjan who was the chief guest and uh, very graciously uh, came to um uh, inaugurate the session and also speak a few words in terms of how uh, this technology is going to make uh, rapid uh, changes or rapid uh, you know intervention in human life uh, thank you mr anwan choudhury i fondly recall our meeting almost 20 years back when you used to be a joint advisor to satyam and tcs in those days uh, so it's it's again a great fortune that uh, right from very senior people from like mr jh choudhury two people uh who are probably new to technology have all attended the uh, webinar that kind of shows the interest in this topic and also shows uh, bala how captivating your uh, talk was that all of them stayed back till the end so Thank with you. these uh, words of gratitude i would like to hand it over to the president if he wants to speak something or uh, mr mohan raidu if he wants to add something at the end of this webinar thank you so much thank, thank you pankaj ji thank you thank you bala thank you. thank you for the interesting program we we took the lead also yeah and i compliment icit committee for coming out with this program and uh, there was one question that whether this program is recorded available or not for their information it is available on youtube so recording is available on youtube and any time any uh, they can uh, go through they can go to the new youtube please. and once again compliments to icit committee and in future we'll be coming out with such kind of programs Yes, thank sir. You. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, thank Pankaj. you, Pankaj. I think uh, with this uh, success, uh, uh, I think we should be able to plan a one full day program on various uh, use cases and technologies of uh, Chat GPT. Uh, we can plan because we have the contact details of all the registrants. I think we will communicate with them. Uh, thank you. 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 Thank you.